Hi, this is Matty and Drajak with Market Watch in San Francisco. Today we're here to talk about TV on your cell phone with Doug Razor from Texas Instruments. Doug, thanks for joining us. Right now, this is in the pilot stages in many countries. When will this become an everyday reality? Well, uh, as you say, it is in trial state and in the early stages of rollout in, I think it's 37 countries around the world. And those trials we expect to be winding down at the end of this year and in 2007 a full-scale uh, expansion into real services. And some of the market research um, companies predict that by 2011, which is just five years away, there'll be a half a billion subscribers worldwide for mobile TV services. Will the viewing experience be as good as your regular TV? Well, it'll, it, it'll be digital. The quality will be good. Now, it is obviously on a smaller screen than your regular TV, so um, I think some of the content will be tailored with that in mind. For instance, I don't think people are going to be watching hour-long or two-hour-long movies. It'll be more about um, news clips, uh, music videos, cartoons for the kids, uh, perhaps watching news programs, uh, business news like Market Watch on your phone. Are there any regulatory hurdles to overcome in the United States? Well, the only regulatory hurdles that, I'm, that, that I can think of have to do with spectrum availability. And uh, you know, obviously, this is a, it's, a, it's a separate broadcast uh, stream from the cellular broadcast itself. So, um, so the, the FCC is issuing spectrum to operators uh, you know, like Modio and others uh, to be able to operate the service. But other than that, the regulatory, uh, there aren't any special regulatory issues to, to contend with. Other chip makers are dabbling in this market as well. What will make TI's chip stand out? Well, we, um, uh, last year we uh, unveiled a technology we call Digital RF Processing, or DRP. And it basically allows you to put the RF components and all the digital and analog electronics all on the same chip. So, for instance, our Hollywood chip, uh, you could fit four of the chips on an area about the size of your thumbnail. So uh, it's a completely integrated digital tuner. Uh, we were the first one to introduce it. It was sampling in January of this year. It'll be available in handsets from many of the manufacturers, uh, uh, such as I mentioned before. So, so I think the technology lead and kind of the timing lead will, uh, will help us stay competitive and ahead of the pack there. Will mobile TV chips become a big volume business for TI? Uh, we're in about half of the mobile phones uh, worldwide. And uh, obviously, we've tailored our Hollywood chip to work very, very well uh, with the, the TI Silicon that's already in a lot of handsets. So as the subscriber base grows, and again, you know, this half a billion number, if it comes true, point to a really, really big business in TI's, uh, you know, you know our, certainly our expectation is that we would get a, uh, you know, a reasonable share of that. Geographically, what markets do you see this taking off in first? Well, the, uh, the DVB-H standard um, was a, a lot of the leadership for the standard itself uh, happened in Europe. So certainly the rollout in Europe, I think, will lead the U.S. slightly, although they'll be pretty close. But uh, in countries like Korea and Japan and, and, um, and other parts of Asia, the, the willingness by a lot of the, the subscribers there to enjoy video um, Content, whether it's gaming or or uh, you know movie clips or cartoons and things like this on a phone, uh, certainly they're they're ahead of us in Asia and Japan, and uh, and those will be the regions of the world that I think will take off the fastest. Uh, I know this was taken some testing was taking place during the World Cup. Do you know how that turned out? Uh, I, I've only seen some of the real initial preliminary um, information about this, but uh, but as you point out, uh, we, we've got uh, we've worked with some of the broadcasters to do some trial uh, trial runs in uh, in the U.S. and in Europe, uh, all around the World Cup. Some of the early feedback is that uh, something like half of the half of the trial participants said that the, the experience was good enough that they'd be willing to pay, and the average comes in somewhere between ten and fifteen dollars a month for a service like this. So, so the initial